Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds. It's the first week of March. It is gorgeous, 70 degree weather, Fahrenheit. You would hope that'd be Fahrenheit, right? <laughs> and we've got two horizontal hives. I've gotten a lot of questions about this one. Did it make it through winter? How is it doing compared to your other hives? I'm gonna be talking about that, but mainly let's just get in there and see what the bees are doing this time of the year. This is a super exciting time of the year. And right before we dig in, we'll be doing some talks on this one in the future. This is a special made one by Horizontal Bees and it has multiple compartments in there for making queens. You can overwinter nukes in here as well, but it also has the ability to feed bees because it's taller and also has multiple compartments. So I've never seen anything like it and it was really cool to see several models that they had at our conference and you could see different ways to keep bees in a horizontal hive especially for folks that have back problems or would just like to make their own so let's get into this hive right here you can see there's some remnants of sugar in here we did the kent williams um, sugar pack method in this hive and it worked way way better than the sugar bricks that's the way he uses it the bees have consumed it really good probably put about seven to eight pounds and I would say when I opened it up today, I pulled about a pound out. I'm going to put it back in when we're done, but I wanted to be able to get to the combs and assess where they were at and what was going on. The maple pollen is coming in, and let's just get down in there and, and see if there's any brood. There's a pollen basket right here on this bee, and all of this comb was not here the last time we were in this hive, so they're actually drawing comb on this second day of March but they have plenty of food. I can see cap tunny on these edge frames. There's cap tunny over here. This hive has everything it needs. And I told several of you that this hive was gonna make it through the winter because I knew it had a young queen that was laying really good. They superseded, replaced in July. I knew they had plenty of food and we did alcohol washes before um, we went into winter and we saw where the mite load was. We treated with Apigard product multiple times and then we came back and we did an alcohol wash after it was over and we saw that we greatly reduced the mites and we had confirmed it and I knew with all those those things that there was a very good chance we were going to come out with a good cluster and these carnies look to be in good shape and I've had this open for a while so I think a lot of them have driven down into the frames but I'm going to estimate based on where this comb is and where they were really focused on consuming the sugar that the brood is in this region right here and we are going to add a pollen patty and I will talk about that here in a second because some people think I'm crazy and uh, you know that's all right a lot of my own family members think that I'm a crazy guy now look at all this propolis right here this bee glue they've used to seal everything up some people say in my videos everything's so easy to do but and they also glue things up a pretty good bit here. So there's not a lot of bees on this frame, but this frame does have about a third capacity of food, maybe 25%. So that's an outer frame. Let's just keep going on in. All right, this is a food frame, a lot of weight in this frame. That's good. Bees will not brood up and build up like they're supposed to if they don't have enough food. So get into your hives and feed them. Of course, if you're in Canada right now, you might be sitting on four feet of snow. So uh, maybe don't get into them quite yet. Oh, wow. They, they got pollen. Look at all that pollen over in here they've collected. Hey, there's some red pollen down in there too. There's just a... Uh, tiny bit right in here and that is primarily from dead nettle and hen bit but this right here that's all young larvae right in there so wow that's a that's really exciting and there's just a little oh there's eggs on this side they're expanding their brood nest to this frame boy i'm excited by this hive but there's no secret recipe to getting your bees through the winter and being successful. And doesn't There are some things that differ from location to location, but if you have low pest problems in your hive and a great queen and, and plenty of nutrition, your bees are going to do good. It's as simple as that. 
there's a lot of work that goes involved for the bees part and our part to make sure that's consistent happens a lot Woo -wee. lots of capped brood right here and there's just a ring of pollen all the way around this is perfect some great looking capped brood oh man this hive and now i'm seeing lots of pollen baskets more capped brood the queen's laying up 75 percent of the frames that's a fuzzy bee right there so brood is already emerging out let's go ahead and check the next frame over now even though it is about 72 degrees we don't want to keep this brood out too long don't want them to get chilled so we'll try to be a little quick here another great frame of brood oh wow yes this is probably where that new bee emerged from and i'm seeing yellow green pollen lots of it nothing beats pollen when it comes to getting bees to want to raise brood when i start feeding pollen patties is right around the time that it starts coming into the hive and i am just seeing more and more cat brood here everything's looking fantastic let's keep on going i would assume that this is going to have some brood in it as well because of that comb right there they're wanting to find a little bit more room to put resources above the brood i could be wrong we'll find out here in a second yeah this is probably the cleanest looking frame yet oh yeah can you see all that white pearly larvae down in there laurel i've talked about this in some of the classes that i've done i'm actually going to be on the fourth and fifth just coming up here in a couple days at the tennessee beekeepers association conference is one of the speakers there and i'll be talking about summer beekeeping and how that's really the toughest season here in tennessee is definitely july august early september and late june some years but the bee these bees right here are clean that the cappings are clean excuse me bees look how gorgeous and uniform and even that is these bees are healthy when it starts not looking uniform it doesn't look as evenly brown or as nice typically the bees aren't feeling good something's going on and we just have the most pearly white larvae down in here as well we are going to have to cut this hive back it's a little too big not yet it's, it's not that big quite yet but think about how many frames of brood we've pulled up four good frames and a partial let's check this next one excuse me this one's heavy so i imagine it's the end of the brood nest yes yes it is so we have honey over up in the top a lot of pollen placed in here i see eggs down into the center of the combs this one's hard to see down into because it is yellow plastic foundation i would highly recommend any of you new beekeepers who are thinking about going to the plastic foundation route to go with black plastic foundation all your brood supers it makes a world of difference on being able to see eggs and larvae down in there it's one of the best things about plastic foundation is the black stuff being able to see down in there for grafting or anything like that and over in here yes this is just all food so this this is fantastic we have at least almost four solid frames of brood if you add it all together but even if we only have three solid frames if you count all the cells and compact it down three solid frames of brood there's over seven thousand cells on a deep frame so if we have three that are solid all combined that's twenty one thousand or more bees fixing to be on the way in the next 21 days this hive is going to boom and explode this is why you have to be on top of it in march here in tennessee or further south even earlier in kentucky and things happen fast in beekeeping 
this pollen comes in as long as they have enough honey or sugar syrup to be able to keep everything warm and use that to heat the colony and make their flights this colony is definitely on the upper end of what we like to see in our colonies and we see several colonies like this a year but this is actually a little too big honey flow really doesn't start good here until about the first or second week of april this colony is going to try to swarm before then because it's just going to be so large so we will want to go and pull a frame or two of brood between now and then and find a colony or two that are a little bit on the small side healthy but a little bit behind and we're going to it's called equalizing the yard out so this colony is in great shape let's throw this all back together and then we need to throw a pollen patty on i say need we can and i'm going to because the weather can change at any time and as a, a professional beekeeper i you know literally depend on my bees being healthy for my living and also some years it's not very kind to the bees this pollen is great but you know how fast 21,000 bees and more on the way is going to burn through all that pollen in there in a matter of days so if we get a week of rain five days or cold weather they can't get out they are going to go backwards and stop raising brood or if it's extreme they will cannibalize some of the larvae to conserve on the protein and we are going to throw this pound of pollen patty this is the best time of the year to feed it and make sure that those bees do not feel like there's any food shortage at all that's why I like to call it pollen supplement instead of pollen substitute because it it's definitely not a substitute but it can supplement. So we're gonna just put this right over the main brood frames, because that's where all the nurse bees are and they're the ones that are gonna be eating it. I like to keep it like long ways on it if possible. And we're just going to skewer this in multiple places. And now they can access it from the top and the sides. If you have a high hive beetle presence, this really isn't a bad idea to do on this one as well. You can literally slice this into three or four pieces and create more surface area so the bees can eat it quicker. And that helps out significantly. So we're, let's just kind of spread that out. Now they can get a little bit more bees in there to, to work it. But that looks really good. I'm, I'm looking at the food here. I'm seeing frames of capped honey. There's capped honey all the way over in here and there's a lot of extra bees so plenty of foragers yeah there's just all kinds of honey down in these frames so you can feed this time of the year if you need to if your colony you know it's, it's getting in the 70s a lot of people like don't add moisture this time of the year yes if you're far up north don't do it here in Tennessee though if they need syrup and it's 70 degrees and they'll take it and they're strong like this put it on there or you can throw a sugar brick on this time of the year or other types of feed. But ultimately, it's better for the bees to have a little moisture added to the hive and have food than to starve. And a lot of colonies starve in March and early April because they're brooding up and building up and they are consuming a ton of food right now. Awesome time of the year. It's hard to believe it's already here. We'll see you in a video in the future and thanks for watching this one.